Hi, everybody. If you're listening to this right now, it's probably because I'm not in school. But I didn't want to waste the day. So the first thing that you should have on your desk right now is this coloring picture. And I like to do this, um, this little activity to color um, because it really gets you to look at the, the molecules. So you're going to need two colors for this. And the first thing I want you to do is color the water molecule. You can color the hydrogens one color, and you can color the oxygens another color. You don't have to have red and blue. But um, go ahead and pause this video, and let's give yourself some time to color the top of the, the diagram. OK, so you have the top of the diagram colored now. You should be looking at the bottom diagram. Go ahead and color the water molecules the same color as you did before. But the larger particles that you see are going to be the sodium and chlorine atoms. Um, I colored mine green and yellow. The yellow ones that I have are sodium, and the larger ones are chlorine, because chlorine is a bigger atom. But you see that the water molecules are actually pulling the particles apart. This is dissolving, and this would be what is happening in a solution. So this is a salt crystal that is being pulled apart by the water molecules and causing the salt to dissolve in the water. Go ahead and pause the video um, as you color this, and we'll continue after uh, you're done. OK, so mixtures you know by now have three main categories, solutions, suspensions, and colloids. Examples of solution we talked about in class, hot chocolate, lemonade, and iced tea. Suspensions we talked about, snow globe, flour and water, sand and water, dirt and water. And colloids we talked about, jello, fog, mayonnaise, milk, whipped cream, and shaving cream. If you were to look more in depth on these three different categories, let's first zone in on solutions. Solutions have a solute and a solvent. That makes them unique um, compared to the other two groupings. Um, they are homogeneous, which means that their particles are evenly distributed. I take a sample from the top and the bottom, and it's going to be the same. Particles are evenly distributed. The solute's evenly distributed in the solvent. They're soluble, which means the solute can dissolve into the solvent. So when you see the word soluble, think of the word dissolved. Okay. They do not scatter light, and I'm going to show you a little test for that in the next little video. They do not scatter light because their particles are very small. And you can't filter them, meaning if you had salt water and you tried to send it through a filter, most likely you're going to get salt water that comes out at the bottom of the filter. Now this is different than suspensions. When you look at suspensions, they don't have a solute and solvent. And the reason why they don't have a solute and solvent is because they do not dissolve. The substances in a suspension are not dissolving. They are not soluble. Um, so you don't have a solute and you don't have a solvent. They're heterogeneous, meaning I take a sample from the top and the bottom, and they are not the same. Uh, so that's like sand and water that I talked about yesterday. They're not soluble, so I told you that before. They can't dissolve, so no solute, no solvent. They scatter light. The reason why they scatter light is because the particles are large. And also, you can trap them in a filter. So for instance, in the book, it showed sulfur and water. And you were able to trap the sulfur into the filter, and the water came through. Um, also, if I had like sand and water, I can filter filter that and get the, trap the sand, but the water can go straight through. So the particles are large enough to trap them, and they're also large enough to scatter light. Notice here I have a sample of sugar water and a sample of sand and water. The sugar water is my solution, while my sand and water is my suspension. Notice that the sugar water, if I took a sample from the top and the bottom, they would be it would be the same type of sample. It's evenly distributed particles. This is a homogeneous mixture. While the suspension, if I took a sample from the top and the bottom, the samples would be very different. This is called a heterogeneous um, suspension. Yes? OK, so in our solution right here, particles are evenly distributed and particles are small. So when I shine a laser beam through, the um, the dot that you see coming out of the laser beam should be a, um, a defined spot, not spread out 
a very defined red mark. And what's happening is the laser is not hitting all the particles because they're very tiny and the beam is going straight through. Now when you look at the suspension, if I stir the suspension up, I'm going to make the large particles float to the top of the suspension, but eventually they're going to fall to the bottom because they're too heavy. When I shine the laser beam through, you can see that the dot is more spread out. It's more scattered because the particles are larger and the laser beam is hitting those larger particles, making the beam not go straight through, but scatter all about. So just to um, conclude, suspensions have larger particles, so they scatter the beam of light, while solutions, solutions have smaller particles. They do not interact with the beam of light because they're too small to diffract the beam of light.